that's uh, precisely the situation. And as the collective bargaining agreement is coming up, uh, we've been assured, assured by the Alumni Association that they're working uh, toward redoing this wrong. Uh, Doug came to the, our state here in Salt Lake City and uh, at a local bookstore and spoke and about his book and and you're getting a real history lesson i hope everybody's appreciating it what he's done but uh you know he's he's doing this from the heart he's not making a lot of money he's coming all over the country at his own expense and it was just a pleasure to meet uh, doug and to talk to him and get to know him and and appreciate his sincerity and uh so uh you know, we'll see what happens. You know, we've been assured that maybe something might come up of it. And uh, I don't know, what do you think, Doug? Is something going to happen? Well, um, yes, I, I believe, as it's been widely reported as of, oh, five days ago by uh, Phil Rogers in the Chicago Tribune, um, Rob Manfred, the executive vice president of uh, uh, for labor relations of, of Major League Baseball, did in fact brief uh, the owners uh, last week in, in Lake Buena Vista in Orlando um, about this situation. Uh, I think the best that George and the other men can hope for is life annuities. And, and by the way, I'm not poo-pooing that. You know, whatever they come away with, whether or not it's um, six to $7,000 a year, I, I've heard as much as uh, twelve to $18,000 a year contingent upon your service credit in, in the game. And I, I don't want to throw hypotheticals out there. It's not fair until an exact agreement has been executed. Uh, and, and while I think that would be tremendous and, and certainly a long time coming, well, why can't the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association, based in Colorado Springs, why can't they really do some lobbying? I think they're taking the easy way out. A life annuity is great. But but George's wife, you know, we hope George is around for a long time, but uh, if it's just a life annuity, Steve, George's wife isn't going to get anything after he passes. And we hope and he's she's a New Yorker, too. Time. That's right, she is. In fact, she, came, she hails from my neck of the woods, right? We found out that George's wife and I are both from Jackson Heights. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, boy, you see... And I'm and I'm from Brooklyn, so I don't know oh, if you well. can tell by my, I don't know if you can tell I disguise my accent. You know, it's. <laughs> but, but, you know, the, the other question that I had too is the baseball assistance team. Do they have any? Have they been any help to you guys in 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 this crusade in trying to to fix this? George, you want to take that or should I? I don't know anything about if they've been involved. I'm I'm going to tell you a quick story. Um, Dick Bainey, Dick Bainey was a talented uh, pitcher. Uh, he was on the, the famous Ball Four team that Jim Bowden wrote about. He finished his career with the uh, Cincinnati Reds. Dick Bainey stands up at a meeting of, um, of uh, the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association a couple years back in Long Beach, California. And uh, he says, you know, look, this isn't right. This isn't fair. Um, why, why can't the, the alumni uh, you know, go to bat for us, no pun intended. And then Bobby Gritch, very obviously talented ball player for the Orioles, uh, for the Angels, stands up and says, hey, Dick, come on. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if you guys have problems, if you need financial help, that's what bat is for. Totally misses the whole issue. Now, now some of the men who I write about have, in fact, availed themselves of grants from the baseball assistance team, Mike Colburn. Mike Colburn was a um, baseball digest uh, rookie selection in 1978. He's been on. He's been homeless on two occasions. The late Nellie King, Nellie King, and Bob Prince, of course, if you recall, they um, they used to call the games of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And uh, Nellie just passed in in August of this year. And um, his daughter and I, Amy King, have gotten to be um, friendly over the phone and via email. And Nellie was not getting anything um, from this game that he loved. He originally started in the Pittsburgh Pirate Organization 
as a pitcher and he served um, in Korea. We're not even treating our veterans of, of the wars well. And he, he did get something from the baseball assistance team, but it, it certainly wasn't enough, not, not to play on anyone's heartstrings, but Nelly was confined to an assisted living center um, in one part of Pennsylvania while his wife of 58 years was confined to another one. Uh, I, you know, the book is filled, Steve, with really tug-at-your-heartstring type of stories. And, um, you know, again, not to be melodramatic, the original question you asked, can that help? Yes, that can help um, all members of the baseball community. But we think Major League Baseball, um, again, you, you've said it yourself, uh, legally they don't have to do anything. Morally we find their position indefensible. My guest tonight on the program is uh, Doug uh, Gold Gladstone, and he wrote a book called The Bitter Cup of Coffee, Tells the Tale of Ex-Big Leaguers Done Wrong by Major League Baseball, and also George Theodore, the former Met outfielder. Uh, George, uh, you know, the other thing is, you know, I would wonder if with, with the Players Association, you know, every piece of merchandise that's sold either in department stores, sporting goods stores, at the ballparks, all have these tags on them that have to be approved by the Major League Baseball Players Association. And for every, I know that for everything that is sold, whether it's a T-shirt, a cap, a, a stuffed animal, or, you know, anything, that part of that, the price of that, goes to the Players Association, and they distribute money to every player. I think it's, and I think coaches and managers get a cut of that too. Now, you know, I was talking earlier about uh, Derek Jeter and his contract talks with the Yankees and everything. And, my God, Jeter's made hundreds of millions of dollars, and Alex Rodriguez has made a couple of hundred million of dollars. And and these guys are still getting these, like, you know, royalty checks. You would think that the Players Association would go to the rank and file and say, fellas, listen, do we, you know, you guys that are in this upper bracket, do you really need, you know, this gratuity check? How about we put it into a fund, a retirement fund for all players? And, you know, when, you know, a guy who, whoever, and any living player who, like, guys like you, George, from 79 back, that they can, you know, funnel from this fund. And I'm sure it, it will be well funded. I mean, I wish that the, the President of the United States could get his hands on some of this kind of money that you would uh -huh. get from this merchandise. You'd probably settle the debt in this country. But you would think that maybe that they they would try to you know work something with the players to say, listen guys, instead of you keeping that check or whatever, why don't we put it into this general fund for retired ball players who guys who have not played for so many years, guys who didn't make the big money, and the guys who are out there who are kind of struggling or really need some kind of benefits. Amen. I think that's great. <laughs> you know, uh, we do get a minor little check uh, every year from our alumni association. However, that's nothing compared to what the uh, major leaguers get, uh, which I think uh, maybe Doug knows. Uh, I know Kelly Downs was telling me over 10 years ago he was getting a check every year for $70,000 from, you know, those uh, kind of endorsements and different things. So uh, that's a good idea. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure where it stands, but in order to fund for uh, this 840 of us that are still around. Uh, I don't know what it would be, Doug, but it would probably uh, maybe be the amount of one of the higher-paid players in today's game. Well, I'm going I'm to say something a little controversial. Um, you know, the Major League Baseball Players Union, the pension fund, has been described as one of the most generous, well-funded um, in the country. And I'm, I'm, I'm all for unions. I'm all for, um, you know, labor unions. They support the hardworking men and women and families of this nation. Uh, but actually, the, the Major League Baseball Players Pension Funds really has got a shortfall. And they're only funded at 59.5%. And I've often joked, well, of course they're not doing well. They're giving Don Fear an $11 million sayonara um, check for his service as the executive director. Now, now why? Don Fear, you know, wasn't fired. Don Fear left of his own volition. Why did the Players Union vote him an $11 million payment?